Part 1. Learning the Shell What is the shell? When we speak of the command line, we are really referring to the shell. The shell is a program that takes keyboard commands and passes them to the operating system to carry out. Almost all Linux distributions supply a shell program from the GNU project called BASH. The name BASH is an acronym for Born Again Shell. A reference to the fact BASH is an enhanced replacement for SH, the original Unix shell program written by Steve Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E. Terminal emulators. When using a graphical user interface, GUI, we need another program called a terminal emulator to interact with the shell. If we look through our desktop menus, we will probably find one. KDE uses console, spelled with a K, and GNOME user uses GNOME Terminal. Though it's likely called simply Terminal on our menu, a number of other terminal emulators are available for Linux, but they all basically do the same thing give us access to the shell. You will probably develop a preference for one or another terminal emulator based on the number of bells and whistles it has. Making your first keystrokes. So let's get started. Launch the terminal emulator. Once it comes up, we should see something like this me at Linux box tilde and then a dollar sign. This is called a shell prompt and it will appear whenever the shell is ready to accept input. While it may vary in appearance somewhat depending on the distribution, it will typically inc include your username at machine name, followed by the current working directory more about that in a little bit, and a dollar sign. Note, if the last character of the prompt is a pound sign, pound, rather than a dollar sign, the terminal session has super user privileges. This means either we are logged in as the root user, or we selected a terminal emulator that provides super user administrative privileges. Assuming things are good so far, let's try some typing. Enter some gibberish, gibberish at the prompt like so. And just a bunch of letters typed. Because this command makes no sense, the shell tells us so and gives us another chance. Bash colon the letters, colon, command not found. <laughs> command history. If we press the up arrow key, we will see that the previous command, K-A-E-K-F-J-A-E-I-F-J, -E 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 reappears after the prompt. This is called command history. Most Linux distributions remember the last 1,000 commands by default. Press the down arrow key and the previous command disappears. Cursor movement. Recall the previous command by pressing the up arrow key again. If we try the left and right arrow keys, we'll see how we can position the cursor anywhere on the command line. This makes editing commands easy. A few words about mice and focus. While the shell is all about the keyboard, you can also use a mouse with your terminal emulator. A mechanism built into the X window system, the underlying engine that makes the GUI go, supports a quick copy and paste technique.
If you highlight some text by holding down the left mouse button and dragging the mouse over it, or double clicking on a word, it is copied into a buffer maintained by X. Pressing the middle mouse button will cause the text to be passed, pasted. Pressing the middle mouse button will cause the text to be pasted at the cursor location. Try it. Okay, what is the shell continued? Note, don't be tempted to use Control C and Control V to perform copy and paste inside a terminal window. They don't work. These control codes have different meanings to the shell and were assigned many years before the release of Microsoft Windows. Your graphical desktop environment, most likely KDE or GNOME, in an effort to behave like Windows, probably has its focus policy all right, where was I? These control codes have different meanings to the shell and were assigned many years before the release of Microsoft Windows. Your graphical desktop environment, most likely KDE or GNOME, in an effort to behave like Windows, probably has its focus policy set to click to focus. This means for a window, window to get focus, that's become active, you need to click on it. This is contrary to the traditional X behavior of focus follows mouse, which means that a window gets focused just by passing the mouse over it. The window will not come to the foreground until you click on it, but it will be able to receive input. Setting the focus policy to Focus follows mouse will make the copy and paste technique even more useful. Give it a try if you can. Some desktop environments such as Ubuntu's Unity no longer support it. I think if you give it a chance you will prefer it. You will find this setting in the configuration program for your window manager. Try some simple commands. Now that we have learned to enter text in our terminal emulator, let's try a few simple commands. Let's begin with the date command, which displays the current time and date. So we typed in D-A-T-E and hit enter. A related command is called is cal which, by default, displays a calendar of the current month. So he typed in C-A-L and press Enter there. To see the current amount of free space on our disk drives, enter D-F. So he entered D-F and hit Enter. Likewise, to display the amount of free memory, Enter the free command, F-R-E-E, -E, hit enter. Ending a terminal session. We can end a terminal session by either closing the terminal emulator window, by entering the exit command at the shell prompt, or pressing Control-D, Control-D. E-X-I-T, hit enter. The console behind the curtain. Even if we have no terminal emulator running, several terminal sessions continue to run behind the graphical desktop. We can access these sessions, called virtual terminals or virtual consoles, by pressing Control-Alt-F1 through Control-Alt-F6 on most Linux distributions. When a session is accessed, it presents a login prompt into which we can enter our username and password. 
to switch from one virtual console to another. Press Alt F1 through Alt F6. On most systems, uh, that should probably have an S at the end of it, we can return to the graphical desktop by pressing Alt F7. So on most systems, we can return to the graphical desktop by pressing Alt F7. Summing up, this chapter marks the beginning of our journey into the Linux command line with an introduction to the shell and a brief glimpse at the command line and a lesson on how to start and end a terminal session. We also saw how to issue some simple commands and perform a little like command line editing. That wasn't so scary, was it? In the next chapter, we'll learn a few commands and wander around the Linux file system. Further reading. To learn more about Steve Bourne, father of the Bourne shell, see this Wikipedia article. It's Steve Bourne. This Wikipedia article is about Brian Fox, the original author of Bash. Brian Fox, computer programmer at Wikipedia. Here is an article about the concept of shells in computing. Shell on Wikipedia, parentheses, computing. Two, navigation. The first thing we need to learn, besides how to type, is how to navigate the file system on our Linux system. In this chapter, we will introduce the following commands. PWD, print name of current working directory. CD, change directory. LS, list directory contents. Understanding the file system tree. Like Windows, a Unix-like operating system such as Linux organizes its files in what is called a hierarchical directory structure. This means they are organized in a tree-like pattern of directories, sometimes called folders in other systems, which may contain files and other directories. The first directory in the file system is called the root directory. The root directory contains files and subdirectories, which contain more files and subdirectories, and so on. Note that unlike Windows, which has a separate file system tree for each storage device, Unix-like systems, such as Linux, always have a single file system tree, regardless of how many drives or storage devices are attached to the computer. Storage devices are attached, or more correctly, mounted, at various points on the tree according to the whims of the system administrator, the person or people responsible for the maintenance of the system. The current working directory. Most of us are probably familiar with a graphical file manager which represents the file system tree, as in Figure 1. Notice that the tree is usually shown upended, that is, with the root at the top and the various branches descending below. However, the command line has no pictures. So to navigate the file system tree, we need to think of it in a different way. Imagine, so this is to navigation. Imagine that the file system is a maze shaped like an upside down tree and we are able to stand in the middle of it. At any given time, we are inside a single directory and we can see the files contained in the directory and the pathway to the directory above us, called the parent directory, and any subdirectories below us. The directory we are standing in is called the current working directory. 
To display the current working directory, we use the pwd, that's print working directory, command. So type pwd and hit enter. When we first log in to our system or start a terminal emulator session, our current working directory is set to our home directory. Each user account is given its own home directory and it is the only place a regular user is allowed to write files. Listing the contents of a directory. To list the files and directories in the current working directory, we use the ls command. That's ls and hit enter. Actually, we can use the ls command to list the contents of any directory, not just the current working directory, and there are many other fun things it can do as well. We'll spend more time with ls in the next chapter. Changing the current working directory. To change our working directory, where we are standing in our tree shape maze, we use the cd command. To do this, type cd, followed by the path name of the desired working directory. A path name is the route we take along the branches of the tree to get to the directory we want. We can specify path names in one of two different ways, as absolute path names or as relative path names. Let's deal with absolute path names first. Absolute path names. An absolute path name begins with the root directory and follows the tree branch by branch until the path to the desired directory or file is completed. For example, there is a directory on our system in which most of our system's programs are installed. The directory's path name is forward slash USR forward slash BIN. This means from the root directory, represented by the leading slash in the path name, there is a directory called USR, which contains a directory called BIN. So cd space forward slash USR forward slash BIN a PWD and ls. Now we can see that we have changed the current working directory to u forward slash usr forward slash bin and that it is full of files. Notice how the shell prompt has changed. As a convenience it is usually set up to automatically display the name of the working directory. Relative path names. Where an absolute path name starts from the root directory and leads to its destination, a relative path name starts from the working directory. To do this, it uses a couple of special notations to represent relative positions in the file system tree. These special notations are dot and dot dot. The dot notation refers to the working directory, and the dot dot notation refers to the working directory's parent directory. Here is how it works. Let's change the working directory to forward slash usr forward slash bin again. So cd forward slash usr forward slash bin then type pwd and you'll see where you're at, uh, that you're in that directory. Now let's say that we wanted to change the working directory to the parent of user bin, which is forward slash usr. We could do that two different ways, either using an absolute path name like cd forward slash usr, and then if you type pwd, you'll see you're in the forward slash usr directory. 
or using a relative path name like cd space two dots. If you hit enter, that will move you. Um, you'll see if you type pwd that you're now in the forward slash usr directory. Two different methods with identical results. Which one should we use? The one that requires the least typing. Likewise, we can change the working directory from forward slash USR to forward slash USRBIN in two different ways, either using an absolute path name like CD space forward slash USR forward slash BIN. Then if you type PWD, it will tell you you're in forward slash USR forward slash BIN or using a relative path name, cd space dot forward slash bin, then, and hit enter. Then if you type pwd, you will be in forward slash usr forward slash bin. Now there is something important to point out here. In almost all cases, we can omit the dot forward slash. It is implied. Typing cd space bin does the same thing. In general, if we do not specify a path name to something, the working directory will be assumed. some helpful shortcuts. In Table 2-1, we see some useful ways the current working directory can be quickly changed. Shortcut CD. Result changes the working directory to your home directory. CD space dash changes the working directory to the previous working directory cd space tilde user underscore name changes the working directory to the home directory of user underscore name. For example, cd space tilde bob will change the directory to the home directory of user bob. Important facts about file names. On Linux systems, files are named in a manner similar to other systems, such as Windows, but there are some important differences. 1. File names that begin with a period character are hidden. This only means that ls will not list them unless you say ls space dash a. When your account was created, several hidden files were placed in your home directory to configure things for your account. In Chapter 11, we will take a closer look at some of these files to see how you can customize your environment. In addition, some applications place their configuration and settings files in your home directory as hidden files. 2. File names and commands in Linux, like Unix, are case sensitive. The file names capital F I L E 1 and lowercase f I L E 1 refer to different files. 3. Linux has no concept of a file extension. Like some other operating systems, you may name files any way you like. The contents and or purpose of a file is determined by other means. Although Unix-like operating systems don't use file extensions to determine the contents forward slash purpose of files, many application programs do. 4. Though Linux supports long file, file names that may contain embedded spaces and punctuation characters, Limit the punctuation characters in the names of files you create to period, dash, 
and underscore. Most importantly, do not embed spaces in file names. If you want to represent spaces between words in a file name, use underscore characters. You will thank yourself later. Summing up, this chapter explained how the shell treats the directory structure of the system. We learned about absolute and relative path names and the basic commands that we use to move about that structure. In the next chapter, we will use this knowledge to go on a tour of a modern Linux system.